Learn the most advanced recruiting techniques. Land the most desirable talent. Launch your company towards massive success. This is the Higher Power Radio Show with Rick Gerard. Manage your career or your career will manage you. This is our topic today on the Higher Power Radio Show, and I'm your host, Rick Gerard. So a recent article by the Society of Human Resources reported that only 38% of U.S. employees are satisfied with their current job. This means that roughly 62% of the survey desire more. So why do people accept what they have and let their career lead them? My name is Rick Gerard, I'm, and you're listening to the Higher Power Radio Show, and we're focusing on helping companies solve the most difficult hiring challenges from a different perspective. Today, I'm sitting with Mike Gelman, the founder of High Five Career Coaching and the author of Pipe Dreams, Seven Pipelines to Career Success. Mike is an expert in career coaching. Uh, he coaches highly motivated professionals and leaders in various stages of their career to gain more clarity, create substantial change, and achieve higher levels of excellence. Mike, thank you for being on the Higher Power Radio Show with us today. Yeah, great to be here, Rick. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to get into this because this is something that uh, I feel like a lot of people just don't pay a whole lot of attention to. So if so many people are completely or not completely satisfied with their current role, why do they pay more? Why don't they pay more attention to the world around them and take the reins and, and make a change to help advance their career? It's a good question. You know, I, I think a lot of times we we have so much for dealing with in life that we just kind of let life happen to us and it our careers kind of take their own momentum they have their own inertia and so many many of us just fall into that trap of just following along and doing the best we can and many people don't either a have the the energy uh, to put into kind of redirecting or or they're afraid in some fashion they're afraid to look inside at Ooh, themselves the and the choices, yes. th the choices they've made, and what would that mean for them if they were unsat, if they were dissatisfied, and they were to redirect? So you, you know. keyed on a key point here: fear, right? Oh yeah. Most people fear change. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. so then, you know, let's talk about the biggest mistakes people make because of that fear, right? So, what do you see people? Wh what do you see with people that you coach? as being kind of the the big different the big reasons why people don't manage effectively their career uh, th i mean there's a, there's a number of ways it, it shows up um, i had a i had a client once who was really upset that her her boss wasn't shopping her around enough for an opportunity and you know after some discussion with her i said well what if she got you a job in marketing or what if she got your job in the facilities she's like no i wouldn't like that i wouldn't like either one of those and when i asked her well what would you like she wasn't able to articulate it and so even if her boss wanted to help her she wouldn't be able to but is it ultimately her responsibility to shop herself well i mean that's my my belief yeah. i mean sometimes it's kind of a partnership but it's the you as the individual or the employee, no, nobody's going to career, nobody's going to care as much about your career as you. So you're in the driver's seat. Exactly. And so the fear is for her uh, to flash forward. A year later, her boss handed her an opportunity on a silver platter, and she turned it down. And why did she turn it down? It was fear. She fear. was afraid. She's like, you know, I like having the flexibility in my current job. I'm not sure if this new job would have the flexibility. You know, and what kind of flexibility. Just, just being able. She worked, uh, just schedule flexibility. You Got know, it. being able to work when she wanted and and where where she needed to be, and and she was afraid of if she would be competent in the new job as well. She had been in her current role for ten years, eleven years, and was used to it. So many times we just get comfortable, and that interplays with being afraid to make a change is kind of the what if. And many, many individuals want a guarantee that things are going to work out okay. They're looking for that guarantee. Well, that guarantee, you have to look within yourself. Well, yeah, part <laughs> of it comes from the conviction and the confidence, right? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So, okay, so then, so the, f 
the, this loops back into fear, right? Um, so fear of change. What what other kind of mistakes do you think people make in 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 this process of not managing their career? Yeah, I, there's certain myths that people subscribe to. You know, one of them, uh, or they resign themselves to. So some people believe that um, if I make a lateral move or or take a step down, quote unquote, you know, moving it's just to get experience in another type of job that that'll wreck their career. And in most cases, the opposite is true because depending on what their goal is, it, it gives them that exposure, that experience. And, you know, it also helps to reshape people's perceptions of them, which is kind of another myth is that I feel I'm blacklisted or pigeonholed. Yeah. Right. Well, if you stay in the same job, you will be blacklisted or pigeonholed. Um, if you keep doing the same thing. You, you could be pigeonholed. Blacklisted is a little... Yeah, a li- little different, but yeah, you it, but but you're contributing to that. Yeah. And unless you state, you know, this is something I want to do, something else I want to do, a lot of times you'll get resistance. So that's something that keeps people feeling stuck is they'll say, they'll say to someone, hey, I'd love to do this, but all they've done is, you know, they want to do X, but all they've done is Y. Or that's at least what people have seen. And so they, they give up. They give yeah. up and they feel, you know, I'm just, I'm just pigeonholed. Yeah. What they could do, though, is something more proactive. They can volunteer, uh, so volunteer for projects within the workplace or nonprofits, put themselves in positions where they can get the skills, experience, or be seen for what they can, what else they can do. Yeah. Well, you know, the other thing that I've noticed is that some people just don't want to commit the time, the time commitment that they'd have to actually put into – uh, re-educating themselves or doing something yeah. else in the beginning, because effectively what you're doing is you're you're kind of restarting a different piece of your career. Right. So you have to educate yourself and become competent because you're going to not have mastery in whatever you're going to be doing. Correct. Yeah. The the concern about starting over. Yeah. <laughs> is a big deterrent. <laughs> yeah. To a lot of people. You know, it's going to cut into my time with my family and this right. Thing. Yeah. Um, and, and I hear that a lot from people who are in their fifties who are maybe they're burned out and they really want something new uh they can't quite retire yet (laughs) and you know the prevailing attitude is you know i'm too old to start over and nobody's going to want me or you know this is just what i've done and it's kind of a that's like the killer (laughs) phrase that (laughs) we've always done it this way or this is what i've done yeah yeah so you might as well just retire at that point <laughs> if you can, right? Um, anything else? Any other mistakes you kind of see in, in career management? You know, I, one of the biggest ones, and I see this more so in the technical community. So your 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 IT folks, your engineers, your accounting. I'm glad you're bringing this one up. Yeah. Individuals, there's a big focus on the technical skills and the yeah. competence. You know, and my work should speak for itself but not much emphasis on the relationship building. And that is one of the biggest career killers or derailers is just putting too much emphasis on that and not on the relationships. Oh yeah, and when you're dealing with engineering folk or like, you know, people who are technical, they don't tend to be relationship driven people. Yeah, they, I mean, they, they, they like data, they like problem solving. Yeah. Um, they're, they're focused on that and they, they add their value in that way. Mm-hmm. But in this day and age, I mean, it's not like 20, 30 years ago where you're more siloed in your job functions. Today, it's, you know, collaboration is really key. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's always mergers and acquisitions. There's always organizational changes. There's And technology projects. changes so and Technology fast. changes. Yeah. And so you need to be able to kind of bridge that gap and to satisfy your, whether they're internal customers or clients or your external ones, you need to be able to have that relationship building and and to add on that muscle so you know what i've noticed is that and maybe we'll talk about it in a few minutes is worst case scenario fast forward to the 50 year old person who has been doing the same thing their whole career and they don't want to re-educate themselves now you've got a scenario where things have changed their cheese has moved there's and they're not gonna you know they're they're not hireable at that point you've got to always maintain that you're hireable at some 
by by reinventing the wheel or re kind of learning the technologies that are but that are viable. Yeah, keeping yourself up to date. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and, and a lot of individuals, you know, rest on their laurels and don't keep themselves up to date. Yeah. I, I know for me, I'm always investing in my own development. I spend thousands and thousands of dollars every year. Absolutely, um, you and I do. <laughs> we we care to admit, we in my do. own development. Yeah. You know, whether it's going to conferences or local trade association meetings, having or a whether coach, it's having a coach, reading books, exactly, all those things. Yeah, continuing yeah. to grow. You know, because otherwise you're just going to die. <laughs> all right, so let's talk about kind of worst case scenarios that you see with people. You know, you mentioned the 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 50 year old employee who 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 isn't employable anymore. You know. What else do you see? Well, I mean, so, uh, and, and I would appreciate a little bit against that. They might be employable. It's, <laughs> it's all for the time being, maybe. Yeah. But there's things they can still do to get themselves employable. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. so, um, I'm trying to think. So, other other things that de derail people a as well in, in that regard is really not paying attention to different clues around them. There's always opportunity. And so someone that's able to spot the opportunities, um, whether you're out of work and you're looking for a job or whether you're within a company, there's opportunities. And an example of that would be, um, do you know your company's strategic plan or strategic goals? If, if you do, you can extrapolate from that, for example, what the priorities are gonna be and what skill sets are gonna be needed, and you can then develop yourself or, hey, raise your hand. Yeah, or are you aware of some of the challenges that other departments might be having that you could come in and help out with? Right. Right? So Opening your eyes to what's going on around you, effectively. Yeah, um, you know, just kind of being aware of the environment, uh, knowing I remember, so one of the trends, for example, we were talking about technical professionals. One of the trends in uh, this one organization I worked in was uh, they were gonna start outsourcing a lot of their uh, software instead of having all their programmers develop stuff internally. Mm -hmm. And so the whole model was shifting from develop all of our own software, you know, proprietary to our company uh, versus let's buy stuff off the shelf and configure it to speak to our systems. So that's something, uh, uh, it's, that a different skill set. it's a different skill set. It's a different skill set involved, right? Because yeah. now going from coding, now you need to be able to negotiate contracts. You need to hold people accountable, yeah. you know, with service level, level agreements, all those things that involve more people oriented skills um, that they're not, maybe not used to. Yeah, I can, I can, I can definitely see that. So we're talking to Mike Gelman, founder of High Five Career Coaching here on the Higher Power Radio Show about mistakes people make in career management and what can happen when they don't manage their careers properly. We need to take a quick break, but when we come back, we'll discuss how to start managing your career now so you can find yourself, if you find yourself on the job market, you're still desirable. You're listening to Higher Power with Rick Gerard, giving you access to recruiting techniques that will help you hire key talent to build your company towards real success. Rick is a recruiting executive and entrepreneur who's been successfully recruiting in the aggressive Silicon Valley technology landscape for the past two decades. After a very successful stint at Apogee, he founded Stride Search in 2012. Based on a lean efficiency model, Stride has uniquely positioned itself as a leader in retained search for the most critical talent hires within a small organization. Whether you're a startup executive or recruiting professional, by listening to Higher Power with Rick Gerard, you will walk away with skills to help you attract and hire great talent. Now back to Higher Power with Rick Gerard. And welcome back to the show. Um, I'm your host, Rick Gerard, and you're listening to Higher Power. Today we're in studio with Mike Gelman, the founder of High Car Five Career Coaching, and we're talking about the importance of career management. Uh, before the break, Mike and I were discussing why people bury their head in the sand when it comes to managing their careers. And now we're going to help you position yourself to progress your career in a more fulfilling direction. 
So now that we've identified some all too common negative results of not focusing on your career first, what should somebody do right now to get started? I, I think the first thing to do is, is, is quite honestly, doing this, the, the self work to get clearer about who are you, what are your values, what do you want? What do you want out of your, yeah. your life? I Absolutely. mean, that's, that's really uh, Stephen Covey uh, in his seven habits, right? Starts, one of his habits is start with the end in mind. Yep. And, and that's basically the principle is, what are you aiming for? And if you're not sure what you're aiming for, then, uh, you know, there's support available to help you get clear or, or just, you know, you can spend some time on that. There's assessments you can take. Um, you mentioned earlier you can get a coach. Um, you have family, friends, bosses, former boss. You have uh, resources at your disposal mm -hmm. um, to help you get clear on what you want. So that's really one of the first steps. Uh, and, and understanding the why. Why is it that you want that? Because, for example, oh, I have many, many clients who say, Mike, I want to be a manager. Or I want to be a director. I want to be the CEO of this company in yeah, their, in their early 20s. Yeah, and you ask why, and they have no clue, right? Yeah, or, or, or it's somebody else's why. Okay. You Got know, it. it's 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 because um, because you know in my family, my that's what my parents, that's what success is in my family to achieve that. Got but it. it's not their why. Yeah. It's somebody else's. So sure. that's that's a really important step. Okay. So figuring out clarity, then what? So figuring out clarity and then identifying what are what are some steps to take. You know, what's Martin Luther King said something along the lines of you, you don't have to see the whole staircase. You just have to take the first step. So rather than get stymied by and overwhelmed by, oh, my gosh, how am I going to do all that? Because maybe it'll take you a, a year, a couple years, depending yeah. on how grand your, your vision is. Absolutely. And what's the next step? So one thing I like to ask is what's one step I can take today that will get me further than I was yesterday? You know, well, that's always the first step, right? The first step, and then, and then yeah, and then the next, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's exactly. baby, baby steps. Sure. So understand what you can do. Part of it is being proactive. So do you need doing your research? So part of it is if you know what you want, great. What's required? What are what are the skills, experiences, and competencies that successful people have in those roles, or satisfied people have in those roles? And there's research you can do. You can go to um, for example, um, mynextmove.org is a great website that has all kinds of job descriptions on it that our government compiles and, and sure. constructs. Um, you so, know. you know, also, you know, when you say do your homework, understanding your market, where the trends are going, and the relevance to what you're doing now. Oh, yeah. I and mean, and open your eyes to the fact that, that – Again, I see too often somebody might get caught in a layoff and they've been heads down in the work and they're surprised by this whole thing and then they have no idea what to do next, right? right? And, and again, just keeping an eye out for what's happening around you. Just if you follow just journals, you can trade journals. I'm sure you can figure that out, right? Well, there's that, and just the news. I know every Tuesday I do uh, not, a not live the fake news. <laughs> not the, yeah, not the fake news, <laughs> or the real news. I don't know. But uh, I do a, I do a, a, a topical live stream on like something in the news. And sure. So I mean, recently, like self-driving cars is like a big thing now. Yeah. Right, and all the companies are vying for Uber and Lyft mm. and you know GM and all Tesla. They're all building in sure. all these capacities. So what does that mean? If you've got self-driving cars, what, what are the potential opportunities that could emerge from that? What are the potential problems that may emerge from that? Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of opportunity uh, with the new Tesla that just came out. It doesn't even have a dashboard, you know. <laughs> it just has basically yeah. like an iPad, you know, like, like your laptop screen. Um, and so what that means is the skills are going to be different, you know. The skills are going to be different. So... Now, how? So, you know, one of the things that I advise people to do is, is just be comfortable in your discomfort zones, right? Like, if you're not comfortable with this whole concept of managing your career, right, or or the fear 
thing that we talked about, right? Um, how would somebody get started there, right? Like, so if, if I'm a guy who I, I have this fear, I don't know where to start, what to do, I, I've kind of gotten some clarity and, and I figured out where my path is, like, how do I get past that fear to go to the next step? What, and what would that yeah. next step be? You know, and sometimes it helps to get some support from, from someone else yeah. because it can freeze a lot of people, right? Usually you have that flight or fight response sure. or you get frozen. You know, part of that is really taking a look at when have you experienced that fear before? Most of us have experienced fear before. Most of us have overcome fears before. So part of it's taking a look back at successes you've had. Sure. Situations when you've encountered fear and you've pushed past it and succeeded. And when I'm coaching people, there's never a time when, when I'm not able to help them uncover uh, an opportunity when they've done that. And it, everyone, it works differently. You know, uh, everyone, it, it, it's, 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 it's something different. Um, well, then, you know, just taking it a step further, you've, you've kind of, okay, so you, to deal with that fear, maybe talk to people, like talk to your recruiters who call you to find out what's happening in the marketplace. Put yourself out there. Yeah, I mean, so, sometimes it's jumping in, talking to people, naming your fear, number yeah. one. Um, Owning it. <laughs> writing I it down. I was definitely afraid <laughs> of doing a radio show, but apparently now I'm doing one. Yeah, so, yeah, you're doing yeah. a great job at it. So part of it's just just starting. Yeah. Because if you don't start, you're not going to get anywhere. So, so the theme here, we almost have like a little Nike tag, just do it, right? <laughs> in a way. Um, there's, there's this book I've just been uh, reading or listening to. I think I mentioned when we were talking earlier, I listen to a lot of my books now. Um, it's by uh, Mel Robbins. It's called The Five Second Rule. And it's a way to just interrupt your patterns that you have by just counting backwards from five, four, three, two, one, go, just to help get you to take action, get you into the, your brain, you know, yeah. uh, but the thinking part of your brain, just take action. Yeah. So there's different tools and techniques you can use to help you jumpstart sure. to taking action. Uh, but build a team around you. You don't have to go at it alone. You can, you can draw on resources. You can also draw on your strengths. Like, okay, well, if I'm not good at going to a networking meeting and introducing myself to strangers, then focus on what you are good at. Maybe you're good at uh, maybe having one-to-ones with people for a lunch. A mentor. Reach, or reach ask, ask people you know for people that they know. Yeah. Uh, or a mentor or whatnot. Effectively, um, basically get yourself a mentor or a career coach or yeah. or somebody that you respect that you can help out with. Or in this day and age of social media, uh, maybe you're an expert, write an article, a mm. white paper on something and post that on LinkedIn Yeah, you know, for others to see. Now, here's one last thing that I notice uh, that I see with a lot of people is that they'll be heads down in their work, in a career, doing what they do, and they don't have time, like, you know, somebody like me calls recruiter, and there's just no interest in talking. And in, in, you know, I highly advise people to to listen to them, to see what's out there, to get an idea of what kind of roles where things are going. Talk to recruiters. Maybe take an interview or two. It doesn't hurt. To, to and and some of these people can actually be part of your resource team, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, very good recruiters know that um, timing is really crucial to whether or not you're ready for a new role, mm -hmm. but they can always be used as a resource. Build one of them into your team. There's a plug for recruiters. <laughs> 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 I've, I've done that myself in the, in the past when I've been approached out of the blue by, yeah. a, by, by a recruiter or a headhunter, and it's for a position, um, not to knock insurance positions, but I often would get contacted yeah. for insurance sales roles, and which is of no interest to me. But I would turn it around and say, you know, but this is what I am interested in. Yeah. Um, you know, and just start to build a relationship with them. So Never the point know. is being strategic, right? You have to be strategic no matter where you are in your career as to where you can go next. And again, I'm just going to pull from what you said earlier, which was. Um, a lot of times you don't you don't know because you just don't open your eyes to it, correct? I mean, that's effective. <laughs> well, if, so yeah, if you're keeping your head in the sand. Yeah, yeah sure. exactly. Um, so what would be the importance of accepting the right position 
in, in making a move to uh, the progression of your career? You know, every, every experience you have can benefit you, but one of the th things I recommend when people are looking for jobs, because oftentimes they'll take the first offer because yeah. they're flattered, and it might be a horrible position for them. So I recommend that people get clear, if you've done the work, to get clear on what you value, what you want, what you need. Um, I even, you know, just write out a list of what are the critical things that you need in a job? What's, the what's gonna be the most ideal fit for you? What's the most ideal work environment? Sure. Does it need to be fast paced or slow paced? Do you need someone, a leader that's kind of a visionary or someone that will just let you work autonomously, to let you do your thing? Do you need work that's gonna allow you to work alone or do you need to be able to collaborate? Um, be the benefits, pi so write down all those things and use that as your filter. Uh, many of us, that goes out the window when we oh get yeah. an offer. Absolutely. And we just, we're just like, okay, we'll take it. <laughs> well, 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 because I think they're going about it as a job search as opposed to a career search. Yeah. Right? Because a career is going to help you progress and a job is just something you need so you can pay the bills. Exactly. And, um, you know, one of the, the latest trends that's been happening in the last 10 years or so is kind of building that portfolio career. And that's another approach. Uh, and it has the mindset of strategic mindset of saying, you know, I want to have these types of experiences. And so you have this whole gig economy and freelance a lot of freelancers and websites that facilitate that, like yeah. Upwork. And you can be very strategic in that sense by, okay, what type of experiences are really going to help position me for that next level, whatever that next level is. Um, so that's, that's really key. Excellent. So we're just about out of time for today's show, Mike. Uh, thank you for joining us today. And uh, welcome to the Higher Power community. Now, if our listeners would like to get in touch with you, how do they reach you? Uh, they can go to my website, mikegelman.com, M-I-K-E-G-E-L-L-M-A-N. And uh, they can also, uh, on LinkedIn, I'm pretty active on LinkedIn, they can connect with me on LinkedIn if they like. Perfect. Anything else you want to plug at all? Or? Um, well, I have a book, Pipe Dreams, Some oh, Pipelines of Career Success. That. Yeah, you know, oh, so. Oh, camera. Oh, yeah, I forgot we're on camera, yeah. <laughs> so uh, you can check it out on Amazon. It's, it's helpful to understand yourself better as well as to manage your career more effectively. And there's a free 28-page journal guide that they can get off my website as well. Excellent. So. Excellent. So uh, thank you again for being here. Uh, thanks to our listening audience for tuning in to this week's episode of Higher Power. Uh, quick thanks to our team, our engineer, Paul Roberts, our producers, Joan Park, Haley Stern, Shanti Rao, and our executive producer, Kim Iverson. Uh, to listen to the show and any of our past episodes, check out our webpage, higherpowerradio.com. Higher, -E and for the latest insights on the show, you can follow our Facebook page, at Higher H I R E Power Radio Show, or check out our blog on Stride Search. Uh, next week we have a really special show for you guys. Um, our guest will be the world famous Mendez Brothers, and we're going to be discussing how giving back to your community attracts talented people to your organization. I'm your host Rick Gerard, and you've been listening to the Higher Power Radio Show. Aloha. Thank you for listening to Higher Power with Rick Gerard on OC Talk Radio. Imagine what it would feel like to lose everything, your job, your home, your family, your dignity. This has happened to thousands of the men, women, veterans, and young adults we serve at Working Wardrobes. What do we do to help? We provide career development services, life skills workshops, job skills training. We provide the perfect interview outfit, and we get clients placed in jobs. Call Working Wardrobes, 714-210-2460. Donate, volunteer, infect.